Hello. Welcome to Dazlius, learning the language of autism. My name is Belle Berroway. For those of you that have only just um, come onto this channel, hello, welcome. Um, for those of you that have seen my other ones, I hope that you've enjoyed the previous ones on last week we talked about hair cutting and um, the week before that we talked about teeth cleaning. So I hope that you found those useful and there was something in there that you could relate to or if it wasn't yet in your lives, if, if it does become a something, then maybe you'll have a heads up. So this week we're going to be talking about water and drinking water because <clears throat> it can be a problem for many autistic people and um, sensory, you know, sensitive people. It comes up a lot and obviously we all need to drink. Um, if we don't drink over a period of probably a maximum of a couple of days, then you know, we start to get health, health problems very quickly and dehydration. So it's really important that we get this right. Um, or we at least try and build the person that's finding it difficult to drink water or any kind of fluid. As with everything I say, <laughs> here she says it again, it's true. It's a process. And if we go into a panic I think, well, they must drink, they must drink, and we try and get the whole, you know, the outcome that we want to happen on stage one, we may create a bigger problem, which increases your anxiety as a parent, which doubly increases the anxiety of your child or, you know, person who's autistic that you're trying to support and help. So the first couple of things I want to say um, is, you know, when you're new to this, you know, it just seems like so much stuff. Um, but if you try and deal with one thing at a time, and remember the first and foremost is it is not personal. If your child that's autistic or you're the person that you're caring for is resistant, um, it's not personal to you. And it's really important to remember that because um, <clears throat> if it's something that they're finding really difficult and... Um, if they're non-verbal or even if they are verbal, but they are finding it difficult to express with words why they're feeling the way they're feeling, which often, you know, depending on their age, um, if they're really young, they often don't know why. All they know is that they are. And they can't explain it. So it can seem very... So sometimes behaviours can, can seem to a neurotypical person like over the top or unnecessary or even aggressive and... I just want to say hand on heart that it really isn't personal. It's that person is trying to communicate to you quite strongly how they're feeling and they know no other way. So it's up to us as parents and carers and loved ones to help them find other ways. But by helping them find other ways, we must listen with our eyes and our ears and everything that we have to listen and accept what they're saying as opposed to just shutting it down and saying, well, you're going to do it anyway. You know, every behaviour is a communication. So it's um, important that we find a way to communicate, hence learning the language of autism. <laughs> so water and the, the sort of resistance to drinking water or the you know, the difficulty in drinking water can, can, there can be many reasons and the list of reasons that I've got are by no means the only reasons. Um, there, there, there must be, you know, a different reason for every single person that finds it difficult. But here's just some examples that I'd like to give you that, um, other autistic people have said, and some of them have been children as young as seven and eight. Um, and some have been, you know, age groups moving right up into adulthood. Um, and the first one, which was like, well, they just don't see the value in it. You know, they just don't understand why they have to drink it. And um, that is something that you can help somebody understand through storybooks, through pictures, through 
you know, looking at maps of the body and, and how a body works. And it's a whole new kind of subject that you could kind of learn about together and why and try and equal it to feeling dry or getting headaches or feeling weak. Um, dehydration can cause all sorts of um, physical difficulties and emotional difficulties. So <clears throat> there are ways that you can explain to an autistic person that why it's important to drink water. But remember initially, if they don't see the value in it, that may be the resistance. Another sort of popular one, a common one I hear a lot, is that the flavour of the water. You know, most people say, oh, water doesn't taste of anything. Well, it does, actually. It tastes of something. It tastes of water. <laughs> and if, the and depending on the quality of the water, um, and the amount of chemicals or fluoride or whatever else it is that they put in water, um, it that can that you can taste that, and that will vary from district to district, from borough to borough, from town to town. So <clears throat> bear that in mind. Um, try and filter your water with a you know you can buy those filter things for water. Um, try and filter your water or purify the water or buy water that is, you know, as pure as you possibly can. Often water from a tap is the most chemically enhanced water there is. Um, and many autistic people are, can taste that, very sensitive to that, and they will not want to drink it. Um, also, the sensation of water going down in through their body can kind of cause quite a strong physical sensation and some of us they just find it really intense also which was something that really surprised me but kind of makes sense once i'd heard it was that it can affect the toileting toileting so if you if a child or a person that's autistic has got issues with going to the toilet i.e. they find it difficult for sensation reasons or because it hurts or because they just feel like they're losing a part of themselves. Um, we will talk about toileting in another video. But because if we drink, eventually we need to wee. Um, someone told me once um, that they know that. So what they were doing, and I've seen it written on various groups that I'm on, not just with um, autistic children, but children that have got the label of ADHD as well. Um, and PDS and various other labels that the sensitive the sensitive children that they know that if they drink lots of water they're going to have to go to the toilet and if they don't like going to the toilet in a public place or at school or just going to the toilet anywhere and it's a real stress for them especially when they're at school or in a public place they won't drink um you know so that's a real anxiety issue and real reality for a lot of people that are sensitive so that's something to bear in mind too um, it also might hurt their teeth their teeth may be very very sensitive and often cold water or cold drinks can um, really hurt the mouth and the teeth so it's um, something to ask these all these things are just awarenesses that maybe you could ask your child or you could use pictures or um, in whichever way your child communicates it's worth asking that question so to get around that you could use a straw and at least the straw will by bypass the teeth and go straight down the throat so they're the kind of some of the reasons why so some tips on how to help the person get, um, get over these difficulties. First of all, it's like build it up bit by bit because it is a process. So um, we ultimately want them to drink, you know, good two or three or four cups of water a day if possible, but um, anything is better than nothing. And um, so it's important to just build it up bit by bit rather than expecting them to drink like, you know, if you've got a little child and you want them to drink a whole glass of water, that just might seem like an impossible task. So you break it down and you just say, well, you can just, just take two sips or one sip or a tiny sip or a, a tiny little suck on a straw, you know, build it up real slow. Other ways that you can build that up really slowly is by using a syringe. 
and you can kind of like, or a pipette, and you can kind of do it to yourself and then you can ask if you can do it to the child and it's like literally a tiny droplet because you're helping them get used to the flavour, the taste, the sensation of water. And if that can often be achieved if it's really built up very, 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 very slowly so that they just kind of get used to the sensation. Real slow, like real slow. Um, that's something that, that can happen. Also, you could try, if it's a real issue, you could try... If they don't want to drink from that much water, you could get them to suck from a flannel or a cloth. Obviously, make sure the cloth is clean and it's only used for those purposes. Um, and just get them to suck on a, on a cloth that's soaked in water. I know it sounds odd and it sounds a bit out there. But if your child is really struggling with drinking and you really need to get fluids in them, it's a really good way of doing that. And then you can start building up onto different tools that we're going to talk about now. Um, ice cubes and um, you can make like little ice lollies. Now again, if they've got teeth sensitive and stuff like that, that might not work. But these are ideas, ideas, fun ideas in ice cubes or ice lollies that are just made of water. You could um, get them to do that if they find that easier. Um, <clears throat> What, what we used to do with our son because he didn't want to drink anything at school at all all day and then it was filtering over into home life um, was the, the school in his class his teacher is amazing and um, George loves water he loves water play he loves swimming in the sea he does it every weekend he's a brilliant swimmer so he loves being in water he just couldn't drink water he found it really difficult so they were happy to use a water spray and they would spray water and he would put water in his mouth that way and that water spray was used specifically for drinking water for n nothing else and um, they got him drinking water that way at school and now he drinks out of a cup and it's all good um, and it was fun it got him laughing and laughter is the key I think if you can get your child and yourself laughing while you're trying to help them with a challenge or a sensory issue that's very real to them and stressful, if we can laugh our way through it, which one is a distraction and two just relaxes you so much, um, then that's a really good way of getting them to drink. And it's loads of fun. So again, you can have water play. Um, you know, you can put water in a bucket and play with cups. And then as long as you make sure it's clean water, you know, just remember it's part of the process. It's not going to stay this way forever. You, you're going to start off like this and you're building up to a cup or a beaker or a, you know, a bottle of water or whatever it is. And, and so you start however, you start where your child is at. You start where they're the most comfortable. Um, you can also use, like, if they're into something, if they've are got a favourite character or a favourite colour or a favourite, I don't know, like, something that they like on the TV, like, they, they have, like, I don't know, Peppa Pig or Thomas the Tank or Dora the Explorer or all the multitude of children's characters, Sesame Street, whatever there is. Um, if they're really into that, or they like trucks or they like unicorns or they like fairies then try you know if you see if you can find a cup that's got a fairy on it or whatever it is that they really like or is the same color that they like or something that they like um some people have said in the past don't let them do that because it becomes their obsession i say and many others and many autistic people say it's not a bad thing if it's something that they like um, you can use that tool, that thing they like, for so many other things and teach them and, and broaden their interest through using what they find safe and secure. Um, use that... I don't like calling them obsessions. I think it's really um, disrespectful to... Just because an, <coughs> excuse me, an autistic person likes something so much, they call it an obsession, whereas if it was somebody else, it's a passion. Um, so some people call it a special interest I just say they just happen to really like it and it's a passion of theirs and so what 
it's really no big deal. So that's a really good way and that can often work same with plates for eating and uh, as well. Um, if you really, really, really are struggling, you can get, you can get like um, food dyes and if they want the water to look a different colour um, or you can buy like natural food flavours um, and just put a tiny little droplet of that in and try and buy ones that are, you know, have got hardly any sugar on in them and like vanilla flavour or, oh, there's so many different flavours you could try and experiment with so that it's just one or two little drops but they're still drinking their water. Or if they really, really like juice, you could try just diluting it a little bit at a time so that they've still got the colour and the flavour of that juice but rather giving them a whole, say, carton of juice, kind of give them like a quarter of a carton of juice and then fill the rest up with water. And then they're getting more water to juice because, you know, all drink is good, it's fluid, but water is really important. And drink, drinking a whole, say, orange juice is not the same as drinking a carton of water. You can look it up scientifically, it isn't the same. It's classed as food, really. So the important thing is to help with all the other aspects of their um, anxiety and their sensory needs and their nervous system, the central nervous system and all of that and their well-being. If we can try and get them drinking as much water as possible, even if it's diluted in with their juice or their other drinks, then the healthier and the easier it could help with toileting, it could help with any constipation or anything like that. It could help with so many things. So it's really sort of beneficial I think if we can get our children drinking water as young as possible um, sometimes as is the same with our boy sometimes um, he needs a cue so he'll drink it but because he doesn't often recognize that he's thirsty or he's too busy or he doesn't see the value in it or whatever he needs me just to say would you like some water and, and, and when I say would you like rather than drink some water I always ask him the question would you like some water and he always has a cup or some, a drink around about wherever he is I always make sure that he does and he drinks some and then he'll look at me and he'll and I'll say do you want some more and he wants some more and I said do you want some more and sometimes I have to keep on asking because he'll just take a couple of sips but if that's what you need to do then do it you know sometimes cues are because not because of laziness but because they simply do not see the value in it at, or they're just busy or they don't recognize the feeling of being thirsty or dehydrated so it's a constant reminder or you can put it into their routine so if you've got like a picture board um, and you have your daily routine stuff set out they make sure that within the routine every activity or I don't know every hour or half an hour or whatever you think is appropriate you make sure that you include drinking a drink um, with as much water in it as possible and that way it becomes a routine for them and then it just becomes the norm and you can use picture boards and you can use picture exchange communication pecs of some manner or or, or like or photographs or something and you know and be the example that you want them to see so you know you drink water too and um, something that I would suggest which is something that we often do because we think it's going to help that person is if they find drinking water disgusting or difficult or real challenging is if you then say oh come on look I'm drinking it doesn't it taste lovely or it's really not so bad or I don't know what you're talking about or you're just being silly or words to that effect that's not going to help because it's devaluing what they're feeling if what they're feeling is real for them then for someone else to say well it doesn't hurt me it's like well if it doesn't hurt me then it shouldn't hurt you when they're clearly saying, well, I don't like it, or it tastes disgusting, or I'm finding it really difficult, or the sensation makes me feel uncomfortable, the last thing they want to hear is someone else standing there saying, well, I don't find it difficult. It's like, good for you. <laughs> I do. So um, we try and avoid saying things like that if we can. 
and, and instead try using words like I can see this is difficult for you and we're going to see if we can help you overcome that or we're going to see if we can find ways that makes it easier for you to drink water or fluid of, of, of whatever kind um, and, and value and show value to their feelings show that what they are feeling and what they're experiencing you hear it you accept it and you are doing your best to understand it and help them overcome it it's um it really helps build up that trust relationship that um we all need in our lives you know whoever we are um but for our young autistic children or even our autistic adults you know if you if you have to trust the people that are caring for you when sometimes the world seems so chaotic and scary um if you can build a trust up then you know your your relationship and their lives are going to be so much so much better so there are a few of my ideas on drinking water um and obviously if it's a real big issue you know check their health take them to the doctor um, speak to the dietitian get you know speak to as many different people as you can um also go online and you know join some groups that are run by autistic people who um, are there to bless them you know ask questions and um, share experiences of their perspective of individually um, I found it really really useful and I know that many many ha others have too okay so if you want to subscribe, you can click down onto my little photo icon and, and, and subscribe so you get alerts on these videos. And there's various other videos you can watch in playlists. I've created playlists um, and share it for as many people and professionals and that you feel may benefit from these videos because I just want to help as many people as we can, um, especially when you're new, a new parent to... Um, having an autistic child it, it can be really overwhelming so these steps I hope will help next week I'm going to be talking about a little bit this is a really massive subject so next week is just going to be like a tiny little taster of the language that we use around our children and our autistic friends and how it can impact if it's negative so that's what I'm going to be talking about next week okay have a lovely week thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.